It is the story almost no one in Lansing wants to talk about. Just who is pumping money into secret nonprofit funds linked to Lansing lawmakers. And what's all that money being used for? Former Speaker Lee Chatfield is facing questions about whether any lines were crossed with a fund linked to him. Tonight, one longtime Lansing insider is breaking his silence about how funds like this can be used and abused. And he's talking to 7 investigator Ross Jones about it. The cleaner, the fixer, whatever you want to refer to me as. For years, Matt Marsden was the ultimate Lansing insider, a fixture in Michigan GOP politics who spent seven years serving Republican Senate majority leaders. Over my time in Lansing, uh, I began to watch the 501c4s begin to morph into something that was a little less um, above board. His tenure included years navigating a legislature that he says was overrun with dark money. Unlimited donations from corporations and wealthy donors all kept hidden from the public. The people have a right to know what their government is doing. Today, former House Speaker Lee Chatfield is facing questions over whether he abused his Peninsula Fund, a nonprofit that took in more than $750,000 in anonymous donations in 2020, spending more than 140000 of it on travel and entertainment for public officials. Since then, allegations that Chatfield was a frequent visitor to Detroit strip clubs and pricey hotels have raised even deeper questions over possible abuse. Having watched dark money funds take root in the Capitol, Matt Marston is disappointed by the allegations, but not surprised by them. If you're a 33-year-old or 34-year-old person elected to, to, to office and you hire a consultant that tells you, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, it's fine, everybody's done it before you. This is just the way it works. This is just the way Lansing works. That's not the way Lansing works. That's not the way Lansing used to work. Today, nonprofits like the Peninsula Fund can be found all over Lansing, used by Democrats and Republicans alike. They started to pop up in 2010 following a Supreme Court ruling that allowed for unlimited anonymous donations to political nonprofits. This is a way that corporations and businesses can completely circumvent the campaign finance system, yet still benefit politicians all out of the public eye. During the end of Marston's time in the Senate, he says he was troubled by how a fund used to benefit Senate Republicans operated. Called the Jobs and Labor Foundation, its president was Lansing fundraiser Steve Linder, and it took in nearly $2.8 million in anonymous donations over five years' time. What I think began to happen with the c Force is they began to be used for more personal use than they were for messaging uses. Personal how? Trips, rental cars, drivers, bar tabs, uh, you name it. Can't show a $700 dinner out bar tab on your campaign finance report because someone like me who does opposition research would love to see that. Fund expenses were hidden, Marsden says, and donors were too. Who donates to funds like these? I would say folks with very special interests certain interests. Were you ever aware of a special interest group or a corporation who dumped a five or six figure contribution into one of these funds at the same time they were pushing for specific legislation? Yes. Back in 2014, he says McLaren Health was pushing for legislation to go around the governor and build a new hospital in Independence Township. And around the same time, they dumped six figure donations into the Senate's Jobs and Labor Foundation. The bill got to the Senate floor, but did not pass. Reached by phone, former fund president Steve Linder had no comment about how the fund operated. What does one give $50,000 to a politician for, unless one wants something? Many of the dark money funds operating today are swimming in cash. In 2020, a nonprofit linked to Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky collected nearly a million dollars in anonymous donations. The Michigan My Michigan Fund doesn't disclose who wrote the checks, but we can see just how big they were. Two donors kicked in $50,000 each. Another contributed $200,000. The biggest donor of all gave $300,000. Today, much of that money is being used to fund a Republican-led ballot initiative that would limit the health department's emergency powers used during the pandemic. Hi, how are you, sir? Ross Jones with Channel 7. Ross, I'm late for a lunch. We tried to talk to Shirky about how his fund operates following a press conference last week. Can you help me understand what your role is with the Michigan My Michigan Fund? Make an appointment, we'll talk about it. Well, we're talking to you right now, sir. But I've got something else to do right now. Thank you very much. Why is it that donors to the fund remain a secret? 
The Senate Majority Leader ducked into a nearby restaurant. When we tried to take him up on his offer to make an appointment, his office told us he didn't have time. Today, Matt Marsden is a political consultant who doesn't miss his time in the Senate. As long as Lansing remains addicted to dark money, he says a dark cloud will hang over the Capitol Dome. It progressively got more and more extreme as, as, as the years went on. And eventually, it was part of the reason I decided to leave. Even the best cleaner or fixer can only fix so much. An attorney for former House Speaker Lee Chatfield tells me tonight that her client believes the Peninsula Fund followed the law. If you have any information about how any of the dark money funds in Michigan operate, you can send me an email directly at ross.jones at wxyz.com. I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News. Ross, thank you.